Hey everybody, thanks for joining us back out here again at the Range Report. It's been a while since I've had an opportunity to get out to the range. We've been in the middle of doing a couple of shows, traveling around, and uh, quite frankly, we've been running out of some guns. So it was time to go out and get a couple of more. And one of the guns that always caught my eye that I never had actually had the opportunity to go pick up was a Beretta Model 70S. Now, you might not be familiar with the Beretta Model 70S. Well, we're going to explain it to you today and run a few rounds down range and show you all about this gun. The Beretta Model 70S is a single stack 380, single action only. Uh, this was actually a firearm that was produced from 1958 until 1985. It was a favorite among the clandestine Israeli Secret Service for its uh, compactness, reliability, and the potency of the 380 round along with the 22 and 32 caliber variety. Uh, what makes this gun a little bit unique is the fact that it was uh, given a lot of problems importing it into the United States. Uh, as you're familiar with our, you know, some of our more ridiculous firearm laws, uh, this gun would have been considered a Saturday night, Saturday night special. Uh, due to size and weight. So what Beretta had to do with this firearm was create a target grip with the uh, the large thumb area right over here, the thumb rest area. And that is what allowed this gun to be brought into the United States for import back then. Uh, really ridiculous. Uh, it really lends itself to only being a right-handed shooting gun. Uh, the controls are all on the left-hand side, so it's right-handed friendly only. But if you were to attempt to fire this with your left hand, you would feel that it's extremely uncomfortable to do because that thumb rest is riding just below your index finger. You can't even get a good uh, purchase on the grip. But uh, a couple of things that uh, is, you might look familiar to you because this gun is the predecessor of the Beretta Model 84. And you'll notice by the shape of it, it looks very, very similar, except the Beretta Model 84, of course, is a double stack. Uh, this is a single action, double action pistol, has a magazine disconnect, so you can carry it locked and cocked. It has the ambidextrous 1911 style uh, safety on it, whereas this one only has that paddle on the one side. Uh, like I said, this guy, even though they look very, very similar, the functionality couldn't be any more different. This is single action only. Uh, you have to carry this locked and, and cocked and ready to go. Uh, the one thing that I got to say about this gun is when you do put this in the cock position, and I'll show you this here, I don't know if you'll be able to see. We're going to do a desktop uh, review of this right in the middle of the video so you can get a closer look at it for what isn't getting caught on camera. But when you cock this firearm, here's your safety. That detent is only about 3 sixteenths of an inch. And it really doesn't take an awful lot to throw that off into the, you know, in, in, you know, whether it's in safety or off safety, it doesn't take a lot of force to move that around. So, you know, that gives me a little bit of pause in thinking about carrying one of these because it doesn't take that much to drop it off safe. Now, providing you have a holster and you, you know, you proper, you follow your proper uh, handgun fundamentals, you know, your finger's not on the trigger, you know, your, your holster is going to cover the trigger guard. So you shouldn't have a problem, but still, it just, there, there's so little there. Now, whether or not this gun being 41 or 42 years old, maybe the springs are a little worn. Uh, we've had this gun for quite some time now, but the only reason we haven't had it out to the range is because the European-style magazine catch at the bottom uh, actually lost a little bit of the threading, and the button came out. So we had to have it re-threaded. We had to put a new spring inside of it just so that we could have positive engagement when we put the magazine in. Uh, otherwise, the only thing we did was fire one shot, magazine fell out, said, all right, well, into the box, off to the gunsmith. So today we're going to change that up. We got all the parts replaced in this thing. Uh, we're going to run some rounds. And you might also notice that it, it may also look a little bit familiar to those of you who are into the German firearms. This does bear a striking resemblance to, if I can get it out of my pocket, the Walther PPK. Another single stack 380. Uh, this one, as you're probably familiar, is single action, double action. It has a decocker built into the safety. Uh, you know, James Bond's gun. But the one thing about these guns that functionally almost identical, 
I mean, the, 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 the recoil impulse is exactly the same. Uh, the trigger pull from the single action is about seven pounds on this gun. It's actually kind of heavy. Uh, five and a half on this one. The, well, the one thing that's really, really different is the sights. The sights on the Walther are negligible at best. I mean, they, they're so, so small. They're, it's extremely hard to pick them up. And if you're going to hit anything at distance of 40 or 50 feet, uh, you, your best is, you know, even a, uh, an accomplished shooter is probably only going to achieve maybe a 12 to 14 inch group with this out of the seven rounds that come in the magazine. The Beretta sights are a little bit more substantial. Whether or not that translates into a little more accuracy, I don't know. I can tell you that the barrel is three-eighths of an inch longer. So we're going to see if all of that tied together makes this a little bit of a better shooter than this. Reliability, double strike capability on the Walther, which uh, actually comes in handy because we've had a couple of times when we're firing this particular firearm where the round didn't go off. Having that double strike capability really you know, made the difference. We're able to get that round off without having to clear it. Whether or not, you know, you have no double strike capability on this. The round doesn't go off. You have to recock it or you have to rack it and clear it. But uh, we, like I said, we're going to run some rounds through this today. See what uh, it does. I'm actually eager to, to, to put some rounds through this. I've been looking forward to shooting this gun for probably 25 years now. And uh, to get my hands on one. Like I said, for the longest time, I had only seen pictures of this. And it wasn't until uh, I went to one of my LGSs in upstate New York and... There it was sitting in the corner of the showcase uh, that said uh, damaged on it, and that was the heel release. But uh, I figured if it was nothing more than just to put one more cat in my Beretta collection, I would do it. But uh, having it now fully functional, you know, makes all the difference to me. So, like I said, we're going to give this thing a shot. Holds 8 and 1, but we're only going to run the 8 out of the magazine. I only have one magazine for it. Uh, these things are actually kind of difficult to come by, and if you do come across them, they're about 75 bucks each. So if any of you guys have a, a source to Beretta 70S magazines, please post the link down below. Uh, help a brother out. I got I to gotta get some magazines for this thing. So uh, like I said, with that being said, we're going to take a couple of rounds. We're going to do a tabletop review so we can break the gun down, show you how it comes apart, show how you differentiate between this and the Beretta 84. And then we'll come back out and do a little bit more shooting. But uh, for now, just keep watching. All right, so about 30 feet behind me is my man-sized silhouette. Sun's going down, so it's uh, getting a little glary out here right now. So we're going to try and get this done in an expeditious manner. we got eight rounds loaded up. We're going to see whether or not this lives up to the reputation that made it a, fame, uh, you know, a, a favorite among the Mossad. So we'll... We're locked, we're cocked, we're on safety, we're ready to go. Get some rounds down, see what this thing does. All right, got eight shots down. It looks to me about a 12-inch spread. Really having a little bit more trouble picking up the sights than I thought I was going to. A uh, couple of right in the 10 mark, which is good. We're going to get some you know, close-ups to that, too. But uh, I'm going to load up my one magazine again, put a couple of more rounds through it. I'm going to try and concentrate on the cranial region. Uh, I think I could see the holes in that a little bit better than in the in the center mass, but uh, we'll get back at it. Alright, so we got another eight rounds loaded. I'm going to try and concentrate everything in the head area this time. We're going to see whether or not uh, I can improve upon what I've done so far. I got to say the grip on this is a little bit small for me, and even though I'm going to take the magazine out again just so I can show you one more time. Even though the magazine has got the finger extension on it, when I put my hand on it, I only have about room for two of my fingers on there. So my third finger is falling below it. Uh, you know, maybe it would be good if I had a 10-round magazine and it had a little bit of extension on it. But like I said, it's just uh, not overly comfortable 
for me, the thumb rest is fantastic. It feels great on the thumb. But just having my pinky floating around down there in midair, uh, not exactly the most comfortable, you know, but still getting good enough purchase on it that I can control the gun. It is a little bit snappy, uh, especially for a 380, but the all steel frame helps mitigate that. But uh, like I said, we're going to put another eight rounds in it, see what I can do. All right, well, all in all, I'm a little bit more happy with that one than I was the previous. We're going to take you down there, take a look at the target. You judge whether or not I could actually hit anything, but, uh, you know, so far, not bad. Uh, and get, I'm feeling it a little bit in the web of my hand. I think it has to do with the, uh, the seam that's on the back of the grip. They're not convention. They're not just a, a, a side panel. They actually wrap around and there's a seam right there. There's a little bit of movement when you're firing it. And it is biting a little bit, a little bit into the web of my hand. It's tolerable. Maybe tighten it up. I'll maybe smooth it out a little bit. Put some grip tape on it. Probably fix that. But uh, all in all, fantastic shooting gun. I mean, it's crisp. Uh, it feels good when it goes off. Uh, there's no... Nothing rattling around in there. There's nothing that doesn't feel substantial. It feels like a piece of machinery. But, uh, like I said, we'll go take a look at our target, see how we did with that second set of rounds versus the first set. Throw another couple at it, and then we'll take it in for a tabletop. All right, so, as we can see, those eight shots right in the cranial region, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Now, that is a little bit better than my first eight shots, which were center mass, sort of. You can see I had a couple of flyers outside in the eight ring, but the nine and the ten... All in all, that's not that bad, but with a little bit of practice, I think I can get a little bit more accustomed to this particular sight picture on this gun. Either event, I think it got the job done. Well, let's set up, do a little bit more shooting. All right, and here we are again, taking a little bit of a tabletop view of the Beretta Model 70S. This is the single stack, single action only, 380 pistol from Beretta. The Model 70 had a lot of different varieties in it. This is the Model 70S. The 70 series came in 25, 32, and 380 ACP, and even had a target offering that had an eight and a half inch barrel on it. It's uh, quite an interesting pistol if you get a chance to see one of those. Hopefully I can bring one to you guys in a review. But for now, we're gonna deal with the one that we have here at hand and show you some of the features on it. Now. As you can tell, this is a 1911 style safety that will not engage unless the hammer is back. And as I explained earlier in the video, there's only a little bit of swing, probably 3 sixteenths of an inch. And it doesn't take an awful lot of pressure to get that from uh, the fire to safe or safe to fire. So that's why I think, it, you know, not necessarily the most positive engagement, very easy to sweep off. Maybe it has to do with the 40 years that this pistol has been around and maybe the spring and the detent are a little worn. I'm not sure because that I didn't buy this new. I wouldn't have been able to. I was about four years old when this pistol was manufactured. Uh, getting on with it. All right. As you can tell, this is, here's the, uh, talking about the sight picture on this thing. You can see that the sights on this are quite diminutive. They're, they're very, very small. They're just milled right into the slide. The back is in a dovetail, but you really can't drift it left or right in in either regard. There is a loaded chamber indicator on the side that anybody's familiar with the Beretta line of pistols knows that this is where your loaded chamber indicator is. This also acts as your extractor. Uh, the one thing that I can say about this pistol that makes it a little bit different than the others is the way the takedown mechanism works. On a regular Beretta pistol that we've all familiar with, and I'll bring in this, my other 380 you'll see that this has got the more conventional takedown lever on this side you have the through pin that you push and you operate that lever you roll this out of the way and your slide comes right off with your barrel and guide rod and spring and then to bring it back in you just simply push the button and rotate that back up 
Now the one thing that makes this different is when you take the 380 double stack out, you take your spring and guide rod out, your barrel comes out the bottom. What makes the, the 70S a little bit different is that there is no button on the side in order to operate this lever. You have to push this back, rotate that to the takedown position, and then take the slide off. Now you take your spring out, but you cannot take the barrel out from the bottom. You actually have to tip it back up and remove it out of the top. It's a little unconventional with given the line of Berettas. We're all familiar on how to take them down. So this actually took me by surprise when I was trying to take it apart the first time, trying to figure out exactly why I was having difficulty. And then somebody clued me into it. But uh, there you have it. That's the Beretta Model 70S in 380 ACP. Eight rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber. He'll release for the magazine. This is what was giving us a lot of a, a lot of a problem that goes all the way through. The little detent on the side had stripped itself out and this button was just free floating. So every time we put a magazine in it and we fired one round, the magazine just dropped right out of it. But we got that all straightened out now and she's good to go. So we're gonna put this thing back together, if I can. You slide that back in. And there you go. And you'll, you'll also notice there is a magazine disconnect. So with no magazine in it, you will not have any function whatsoever with it. You have to put the magazine back in it. And there she goes. So, like I said, this is Frank from the Range Report. We're going to go back out to the range now and put another couple of rounds out. All right, from the same distance with another eight rounds. We're going to see if we can't keep everything right in that head. Uh, threw two of them outside the head, but you know what? That's okay. You know, I, I do got to say I'm as I'm kind of torn. As much as I wanted this gun in the collection, I can't really see myself as being somebody who's ever going to carry it. Uh, it's just not as comfortable for me as I would like. I find it when my hand is on the outside because of that thumb rest. Even my support hand, uh, I can't put it where I would normally feel comfortable. So I'm kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere with it. Uh, that and the fact that my pinky is, like I said, it's under the grip. Uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's hard for me to say. The gun functions beautifully. I mean, it works great. It's, it's smooth, it, it does everything it's supposed to do. Perfect, but uh, just not comfortable. Now, what I think I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and locate a couple of the uh, Italian slides for it, which are uh, just the slab side and, and, you know, a nice rosewood, I believe. I think most of the Berettas I have are, all came with rosewood grips, so I think that's probably what this had. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't get a set of those grips and, you know, I, who knows, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's love in the making, not sure. But as it is right now, it just, it's just not very comfortable. Uh, and like I said, for me, I, I tell people, if you find a gun that you're comfortable with, but you don't shoot that well, you can always practice and become proficient. But if you have a gun that you're not comfortable with, it doesn't matter whether you can hit something or not. If you're not comfortable with it, you're probably not ever going to carry it. It's going to wind up sitting in the drawer or sitting in the safe. So find something that you're comfortable with. If a gun doesn't feel good in your hand, you it's never going to become part of your daily routine. So find something that you're comfortable with. This right now, I can't say I'm comfortable with it. But uh, like I said, who knows? Maybe if my hands were one third of the one third smaller, uh, and if it didn't have that thumb rest on the side, maybe it didn't have that seam up the back. Maybe I don't know. We'll try a couple of things. I'm uh, I'm not going to give up hope. <laughs> it's a it's a Beretta. So uh, and if you know me, you know I love Berettas. So. Now, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give it a failing grade. I'm just gonna say it's not necessarily the gun for me. Is it the gun for you? I don't know. Try and find a Beretta Model 70, and uh, run some rounds through it. Who knows? It might be the gun that 
uh, fill, fits your requirement. Right now, it's just going to fill that empty slot in the safe. But uh, like I said, this is Frank from the Range Report. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, especially if you have a link for magazines or grips. Let me know. Uh, and while you're there, remember to visit us at uh, calendar.l1f.us. We're in the middle of our uh, annual fundraising effort. And uh, who knows, you may have an opportunity to win a custom-made $10,000 rifle from 5150 Rifles, along with a whole host of other fantastic prizes. And uh, who knows? And, oh, and if you happen to be out at SHOT Show this year, look for us on the show floor. We're going to be walking around doing interviews with people just like we did last year. And if you're at SHOT Show and you see us walking around, you see the, the Liberty First logo, you know what? Flag us down, get on camera. We'd love to hear from you guys. So... Like I said, you guys be safe, shoot straight, have a good one.